Hey guys, coming at you with another video. One thing I have not done in a while is some maintenance on the 125. About every 10 to 15 hours, I'll go through and re-grease some of the bearings. So what I'm working on today is I'm gonna bring you through the process of pulling the shock linkage off the bike and re-greasing those bearings. The easiest way to go about this is to get the bike up on a scissor lift. If you don't have one, a regular dirt bike stand will work as well. Before we start tearing things apart, I'm gonna show you how to check for a worn bearing. So grab the back of the bike, either at the swing arm or the wheel, and pull upwards. If you feel any movement, there's a worn bearing in either your linkage or one of your shock bearings. This linkage seems to be pretty tight, but if you do have some movement, look underneath as you're pulling up on the back of the bike and you should be able to identify which bearing it is. The top shock bearing could be the culprit as well. So it is kind of difficult to look underneath as you're pulling up, so maybe grab a buddy to help you out with this. Besides your basic hand tools, you're obviously going to need some grease. This Bellrate waterproof grease is what I prefer to use. And then a brush to apply the grease. I like using these little acid brushes. And while it's not 100% necessary, I would highly recommend having a torque wrench for this job. For those of you wondering where you can get these three items, I will put them as the first three links in the description. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna switch to the voiceover now. Hey guys, welcome to the voiceover. So we're gonna start off by removing the three bolts that hold the linkage onto the bike. The one that connects it to the frame, the one to the swing arm, and the one to the shock. The bolt that holds the two linkage pieces together, we can leave for now. I didn't show it in the video, but it's actually easier to loosen it up while the linkage is still on the bike. In order to remove the linkage bolts, you're gonna have to lift up on the back of the bike to relieve the pressure, and then the bolts will slide out. It also helps to wiggle things around as you're pulling these bolts out. Now that the three bolts are out, the linkage can be pulled off the bike. Now we're gonna separate the two linkage pieces by pulling that last bolt out. Before we open up the linkage, it's always a good idea to clean things up so no dirt can get into the bearings. For those of you that think pressure washing a bike pushes water into bearings, let's see if that's the case on this bike. So ever since I built this bike, I've put probably 20 hours on it and I've only used the pressure washer to clean it. And that's after every single ride. So let's see if there's any water in these linkage bearings. I bet you there isn't. Let's open this linkage up and see what we have inside. So just pull the caps off the end and push the center bushing out. From the looks of it, there's still plenty of grease left in this bearing and I don't really see any moisture whatsoever. Of course, grease goes bad over time, so I'm gonna re-grease all these bearings nonetheless. It's pretty straightforward to clean up the bushing and caps, but for the bearing, you definitely gotta be careful. These are uncaged needle bearings and they could fall apart if you're too rough with them. So to clean the bearing, I'll wrap a towel around a screwdriver and only go in and out of the bearing. Try not to spin the bearing or else the needles could fall apart. So just plunge away. It's also not a bad idea to clean up the seals as well. Looks like most of the old grease is out of this bearing. You don't need to have the bearing perfectly clean, just do the best you can without disturbing the needles. Alright, time to get grease then. We're going to take a healthy dab of grease and work it into the bearing the same way we were as we were cleaning the bearing. So just in and out of the bearing, trying not to spin the bearing or knock the needles loose. Apply grease from both sides of the linkage. And there is no such thing as putting too much grease in there, so pack her full. Before you slide the pin back in, apply some grease to that as well. Carefully slide the pin back into the bearings, and if the pin stops, pull it back out and make sure all the needles are still intact. With the pin installed, spin it around to work the grease in, and also make sure those bearings feel smooth. The last thing to do is reinstall the dust caps. I'm gonna take you through cleaning and re-greasing the lower shock bearing as well. This bearing receives the most amount of abuse out of all the bearings, so take your time with this one, since it's the most likely to come apart on you. The process, however, is the same. Pop the dust caps off 
push out the bushing and clean everything up. One thing to keep in mind with all of these bearings, if they fall apart really easily, more than likely they're worn out. So they should stay together as long as you don't jab at it with a screwdriver. All in all, I would just exercise a little extra caution when working with this bearing. With this lower shock bearing, try to pack as much grease in there as you can. This will help combat any extra wear and tear. Finally, reinstall the bushing and pop those dust caps back on. Don't forget about the other two bearings. The process for those is going to be very similar. Now we're ready to put the two linkage pieces back together. At this point, don't tighten the nut all the way down. I'll show you why later on. Uh, not sure who that guy is, but sick bike. Before we reinstall the linkage back on the bike, let's throw a little grease on the linkage bolts. Then slide the linkage back into place, and in order to reinstall the bolts, you're going to have to lift up on the back of the bike. I would start with the frame bolt, then the swing arm bolt, followed by the shock bolt. Again, you're going to have to pull up on the swing arm and wiggle things around to get these bolts into place. Now we're going to thread the nuts back on, but don't tighten them down all the way or torque them quite yet. Here's a little trick I learned a while back. It makes sense in theory, it's debatable whether it's practical or not, but I do it anyways. Take the bike off the stand and compress the suspension. This will line things up and just settle everything in. Having the linkage bolts loose allows for this to happen. When you torque the linkage bolts, leave the bike off the stand. If you think about it, when you're riding the bike, the suspension is under the weight of the bike. So it only makes sense to torque the linkage bolts when the bike is on the ground. The order in which you torque the bolts doesn't really matter a whole lot, but it makes sense to torque the frame and swing arm bolts first, and then move on to the connecting bolt, then the shock bolt. On this particular bike, an 05 CR125, the torque spec is 39 foot-pounds for all the bolts except for the lower shock bolt, which should be torqued to 32 foot-pounds. Now you have no excuse to go grease up your linkage bearings. Couple things to remember. I would try to do this every 10 to 15 hours of ride time, maybe even sooner, especially if you're riding in sand or muddy conditions. And you should have no problem pressure washing around the linkage, just as long as you don't get like within an inch of the seals, not a great idea. All right guys, thanks for watching and take it easy.